raspberry granola breakfast. By far the best breakfast I've found in the freeze-dried food world. I can barely lift my arm today after wiping out yesterday and messing up my shoulder, but I fully intend that the adrenaline will allow me to draw back on a bison because today is hunting day two. And we've learned so much yesterday. JR and Ray and Marcus and Dan have all said we're gonna go to school on what we learned yesterday. That's why we're not getting a super early start on it. What we learned yesterday is you just kinda lay back, let everyone else get it out of their system. And when the bison move off to go bed somewhere, then you go after them. That's how you do it. That's what we're gonna do. By about 10 o'clock, we'll have one tipped over here. Stay tuned. So we're here on this strategic glassing point where we can glass up high and down low because yesterday with all the hunting pressure, a lot of these bison got pushed really, really hard and they're down low, I think, in these trees. So we're just gonna have to pick them out and sort them out, try to find one we can stock on. So. Really windy today, you can see the weather's much different. They're calling for rain today and snow tomorrow. So, let's see how it goes. You see anything interesting over here? I see nothing interesting over Good. here. We've got an isolated herd up here. Way up? Yeah. Cool. Basically where you can see the two, that notch. Yeah. If you go up up this side, there's a real blonde, there's a real blonde patch. Yeah. A grass, or right back in there. Oh yeah. And, and I don't think anybody's gonna, not to say not everybody's not looking over there, but I mean, if anybody could be anywhere up here, but I think that's a, yeah. I think huh. that's that's one we might want to move sooner rather than later on. I'm up for that. Let's go do it. All right. Can't do anything with them when they're in private. We went up there and they were on private. We just took some footage of them and came back to our glassing spot. Now we'll find them when they're not on private. Is that a bison? Yeah. Right to the right of them? Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. Oh yeah, that's a bison. Yeah, you're right. Uh, he stood up. The oh, there's a second one. Oh, there's a third one. Bump them off the hill for us. <laughs> we got some bison coming down the same path. They stopped on the same little rock ledge they bedded on last night. We know the path they take, so let me go see if we can intercept them. I don't know. Got a funky wind. Got vehicles. I think other people see them, but we're gonna go. See if we can be the first ones there.
They're close. They're really close. Who? Randy and Dan. They're like right below. Randy's drawn. I don't know, I couldn't place that arrow any better if I tried. At least from what it looks like where there's just blood streaming down. I know where the arrow would be, it was a pretty steep uphill angle. He was right here. I'm gonna look for my arrow. You keep your eye on if they come out here. Okay. I think he's the one low and right. He's down. Yeah. He is, he's gonna die right there. Whew. After all this running around, we go up into these quakies and Dan says there he is and so we have to side hill here and they run down and he's gonna, he's laid down from the shot <laughs> way over there about 15 yards from the road. <laughs> I passed a shot yesterday, last night. I've, all night I'm thinking, boy, that might not have been the right thing to do. That might not have been the right thing to do. And then this morning we're on our glassing spot and Ray says, hey, those four bulls, those hunters bumped are coming down, same, same drill as last night. So we tried it and they stopped at that bench where we stocked them last night. And then they came down here. Yesterday in the morning when we were chasing all these herds up here, they kept crossing right here, right here. So Dan and I went and parked the truck back where the game warden checked us yesterday. And we start sneaking up here, sneaking up here and we get up in these aspens. They'd seen us and they start moving this way and they start just side hilling. An ATV comes driving on the road down below and I think that's what pushed them up higher here. And so we're just running to our left. And finally, they stopped right here because there's a road down below and they're just looking. And Dan says, the one in the back. And I range him 44 yards and I'm just waiting. I don't know how long I was at full draw, waiting for the perfect shot, just everything feeling perfect. Boom. And I saw the arrow just go right there. Just, I couldn't have placed that arrow any better. And he's laying there, his three buddies are trying to figure out, hey Fred, are you coming with or what's the deal here? I can't even tell you how excited I am right now. This is a dream of 20 years. I can't even believe it. I am, I'm just in awe. He's dead, he's got his feet up in the air. He's laying right there. He's not even 10 yards from the road. I am embarrassed to say that folks, if ever you could get a bison out whole, if you had enough guys who could lift it, this would be it. So I'm gonna go get my truck. JR is gonna be there already. And I'll come back and find my arrow. I got all day to do that, but right now, I wanna go see him. This is so cool. Snowing, blowing, amazing. I'm gonna pull out right here. I can pull out right there. 
we get back up here and that's what we in. That's yeah. what we said. <laughs> Let's get him in the back of the truck and court him out at camp. I couldn't believe that. Oh, that, that was kid. awesome. Too bad he got a puny one, huh? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Nah. There were four of them, They're and it was massive. the one in the back who was like, I wonder what, why are these guys in such a hurry? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, what are you looking at, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Right there. Oh my gosh. Oh. Ah. Oh. It's going to take a couple guys to lift that head up. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. I, 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 I can't move the road, folks. I'm sorry. He made it. I'd say from where we hit him, he's his whole path here is, I don't know, four or 500 yards. And so last night, I had a chance at a bull, same exact shot almost, other than more quartering instead of quartering away. But this is why I didn't shoot last night. You think of a perfect lung hit, he was on his feet for, I'm guessing, seven to eight minutes. And last night, when it was dark, if he would have ran nonstop for seven or eight minutes, who knows what, what we would have found, if we would have found him. So that's why I passed. And how ironic that today, the same exact shot, other than perfect quartering away, same distance, same everything, one arrow. And my dream of taking a free-range bison with a bow here in the Henry Mountain is now satisfied. Got a bunch of wonderful friends to thank for helping me. JR and Ray and Marcus and Dan. All the people who, when they found out I had the tag, so many people gave me information. Scott and Ben, all you guys. Can't thank you all enough. I, I'm usually not at a loss for words, but right now it's probably going to take me a few minutes to just think about it a little more. Get the rest of the guys up here to come and look at him. They got to come all of about eight yards. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. We brought these llamas here. We were, thought we were going to be packing one out of the depths of a canyon. And if we could back my truck up and take the topper off, I'm sure we could get him out whole with, let's see, seven, eight of us, maybe. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bull, thank you. Unbelievable. I better get my tag and get it punched and we'll start taking care of the, the rest of it. I, I wish I knew what to say, I'm so thankful public land they're an amazing animal they are amazing